point of this is to really narrow in on what is it that is necessary in order to get to that $8,820,000 a year, you know, $150,000 a year. So what do you think, so let me ask Jen first, what do you think are the top three habits that help you earn between, you know, we're just gonna use, we're just gonna say $100,000 a year because it's right around there for you guys to give or take. What do you think are the top three habits that you develop that actually help you achieve that? Um, so, I wrote notes because I'm a note person, but um, I really thought about this a lot, and the top three habits I would say would be keeping to your calendar and making sure that you do your weekly calls, um, lead gen and follow up. So, if you're just doing follow up, then you're not adding anything to your database. So it has to be lead gen as well. So whether or not you have to knock on doors, farm, whatever you have to do, that's gonna build your database. But then the follow-up is huge because I'm still mm -hmm. closing deals from follow-up for the last four years. So, um, and then the third one, um, I'm always cognizant of, and, and Tom kind of taught me that, or you did, I don't know, between the two of you. Um, the top five that you're that that are in your list that you have in your car, I'm always cognizant and, and you guys said this, mm -hmm. you know, what's the analogy? Whack a mole, okay, whack -a -mole yeah. or or your caveman, you know, knocking it out and dragging it. So so you're always cognizant of knocking that one person and that means getting them under contract. And so yeah. your thought process is always like get that one under contract and then the other four. Get that one under contract and then you know methodically do that and then just move the the next top five into those spaces above. Right, right, exactly. It's funny because I know uh, Jen called me the other day, he's like, I'm still working on, you know, so and so. I won't say the name just um, but it was we someone, spoke to him four years, years ago. ago. <laughs> four years ago and he calls and's like, okay I'm ready to buy. You know, wow. and that's how it goes. That's that's the that's really where the secret sauce is. Is it's in that long term cultivating that database. So, um, so Tom, what would you what would you say are the top three habits that help you earn six figures? I can't really add anything to that other than just uh, the same thing: time blocking. Consistent lead generation leads to consistent sales. I think we tend to mistake movement for achievement, and we go, okay. Oh my gosh, I've got three under contract and I don't need to lead generate. And then so you'll do three this month and none this month and two this month and none that month. And well, one so. of the things that I, I know, if it's okay if I speak to it, is Tom is consistent. He comes in every morning and he gets on the database and he makes calls. Even if he's got to leave at like 1030, you still come in and you start your day the same way every time. <coughs> and, um, and then you go back to it in the afternoon if you have time. So it's... So... I think that part of like what's been really um, pivotal for you in achieving that is like that consistency of just coming in and running your schedule the same way every time, which is kind of what Jen said too, and you're always making your calls, always. Very consistent. Following up with people. And to piggyback on what she said with follow-up, I think salespeople tend to be instant gratification people. And so the guy that said his divorce isn't going to be done until next August, we tend to forget about him. and so. You know that upfront contract with you know I'll follow up with you and I I tend to not say okay I'll follow up with you next July I, I tend to say hey how about if I just touch base with you once a month because things change yeah. well my divorce went through quicker and I already bought a house sorry you didn't follow up that's so I think I think what you said about follow up is I think I do more deals out of follow up than I do out of new yeah most people are people true. so so what I heard you guys say is some of the key things are obviously be consistently making those calls right yes and um, putting people in the database, whether they're gonna do business with you today or in five years from today, but constantly just putting people in the database and being consistent in your behavior, right? Whether that's Tom comes to the office and makes calls, whether that's Jen makes her calls every week, that consistency. And I heard also focusing on your one that you can get under contract now and keeping your list of your top five all the time, right? Um, so how, how would you guys say, let me start with Tom, how'd you go about developing um, your skills and behaviors, the ones that you have that are help, that have helped you, you know, the consistency, the lead gen, the lead follow up, how did you go about developing your skills? Fear. Okay, that works better. 
<laughs> well, I, I think when I when, when I first started out, I, I my board I'd have a board and I would do what I just said. Don't, don't right. mistake movement for achievement. And then when my board would get down, I would and I think Chris even saw this a couple times. My board would get down to one. I go, Shh, I need to get on the phone. Yeah. So that I would get on the phone, get some more deals, and then not and then you know. So that's where that happened. And and but I would say, um, listening to other mm -hmm. salespeople and every time I heard a script, in particular from you, things. You know, I would hear one and I would commit it to memory and rehearse it and kind of make it my own and and just add, constantly adding a skill set or a script for, well, what if they say this? What if they say that? And that has really helped me be able to get on the phone because I'm not afraid of what they're going to say because most people are pretty nice anyway. So I would say that's developing the skill set, just keeping my ears open. And do, I think learning the disc profiles helped me more than anything because I tend to talk too much. And so learning that Sandler training where you should be talking 30% right. of the time and understanding that they're not going to adjust their personality to you. You've got to adjust your personality to match them because they buy for their reasons right. and we tend to get impatient. I do as a high I tend to get impatient with C's and S's and that and so I think that helped so a lot. So one of the things I heard you say that I think is critical is you have a something that's driving you and motivating you and you make it visual, right? So you put it in front of yourself and whether that's you list out your people in front of yourself and you look at it every day, so then you can visually see when your pipeline starts to recede, you know, um, and developing your, your scripting skills. And I think it's habit. Yeah, I think we, we have to go back to what we were talking about, the top three habits. I think when you create a habit and and i don't know all of the gurus say habits what is it you do it every, you know 21 days straight and it becomes a habit yeah. or you do it a month straight two months whatever it was but it's habit and so once you have that habit consistently in your weekly um training so mm -hmm. to speak so you just you have to have that habit going all, right. all the time so then all of a sudden your old paradigms and your old things don't start popping up as much and then right. all of a sudden your habit becomes you know your your everyday thing um i would just layer on that i think part of it is that as people we don't realize we have habits but i guarantee you have habits Absolutely. whatever the habits are you have them with, especially with doing business and um and you you're going to do it exactly the same way as you've always done it until you choose to adopt new habits and you can either clearly make a decision on which ones you will adopt and add, or you're, you're just gonna make it yourself subconsciously. You know? I gotta add something to that. Um, I heard it said that uh, you, you do something that makes you uncomfortable over and over until it becomes uncomfortable not right. to do it. Anyone who's been a runner or worked out, you start out, you hate it, and then when you, when you get to where you do it long enough, speaking of, of the habits, you mm -hmm. get to where it's uncomfortable not to do it. So once you get to where it's, comfortable to do that uncomfortable thing you got to find something else right if you stay in your comfort zone if you do what you've always done you'll get what you've always gotten right mm -hmm. so you have to constantly step out of your comfort zone say things you never thought you'd say do things you call the, people you never thought you'd yeah. call call people you never thought you'd call and just just develop habits that that make mm -hmm. you uncomfortable until they become uncomfortable not to do right. it well because if you stay in comfort zone you stay where you are and i think as human beings whether it's selling real estate or just anything we're all designed to want to grow and develop as a human being and we can't grow and develop until we do things that were uncomfortable for us in the first place whatever it is sure. right um <coughs> so something i think i really like to hear from you and we'll start with jen is um how long did it really take you to get to your current production level because i feel like there's a misnomer in our industry that um you can, like people get that, think they're gonna get out of real estate school and I don't know how many times they're like, oh, I'm gonna make $100,000 my first year and I go, okay. <laughs> well, you might be the exception, I don't know, but statistically, that's unlikely. It, so, it, it took me two years Yeah. It, it, to, to get where I'm at now. Yeah. Um, and it, reaching that level yeah. and continually doing what I do to keep that level, That that's, Kind of, kind of what keeps it sustained, mm -hmm. but it took two years, and I think realistically, eight months, eighteen months to two yeah. years. Is, is I believe that. So what I, what I think, Jim's, I'm hearing you say, Jen, is I adopted the new habits, mm -hmm. and it took eighteen months to twenty-four months to actually see the results from my new habits and my new system. Right? It took time. 
And what and Tom, what would you say? Um, how long it how long did it take you to get to your current production level? It, it's it's the the th start the start of the third year. So what, what Jen said, the, yeah. the year you were hired, I did X amount. I think I did like twelve deals, but I was working part time my first full year. But then my then you know you hit that uh, what's it called master uh, you know you're critical in momentum mass, you're in momentum yeah. and then you hit mastery and you know you just kind of kind of get there so I think it takes I think the start of the third year start of the third year that's what it took um, and I I'm just gonna ask you this what did that experience feel like well it was pain <laughs> I, I I'm an instant gratification person so I know that of myself so it actually was frustrating. Um, yeah. In the first, uh, actually, just that entire time, it was frustrating, and I think it was frustrating because uh, of that, and because of ego, and so I, mm -hmm. it, it took a while for me to go. Okay, I just need to leave you here at the door, my right. little ego, and then walk in and, and be open to to new learning and new ways and new models, and really a, mm -hmm. a believe it and absorb it, and. And yeah, it was frustrating at first, but now it's deeply satisfying. So yeah, but that the two years though, it's not like it feels good. No, it's very uncomfortable. You're you're frustrated, and the results aren't showing up, and yet you keep coming in and doing it. Um, I mean, I think that's that's the thing. I think how many people give up right before they're at, they can't see, you know, a force through the trees, and they keep going through and like, oh, this isn't working. Da, 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 da. So they quit, but they but don't realize right how close they, they are, are to the <laughs> other side. Yeah. So how about for you, Tom? Because I know, I'll give you perspective too. Tom and I started selling together in 2010. So for anyone that was selling then, knows it was kind of miserable. <laughs> Every I, I think we might have sold some houses for $50,000. <laughs> yeah. 38 in Napa. 38 in Napa. Mm. But I, I'll be the first to admit it was, I think it, I was, it was easier for me on a couple levels. One is, um, listings didn't fly off the shelf yeah. like they do now, so the absorption rate. So we had at times 20, 30 listings, and I was the only one taking sign calls and arches. So, well, when they're, when they're short sell, they might be on for a while. <laughs> so, so for me, it was a struggle. Anyone yeah. that knows my story, I was I was broker than broke. Mm -hmm. So, but I stayed after it because I saw the vision and I knew that <clears throat> it's it's the innocence of a child kind of in a way, mm -hmm. hey, do this, this, and this, and this will happen, and I bought in, and I mm -hmm. believed that, and when it started to actually happen, when I started to use some of the scripts and dialogues, and it started, oh, you want to list and buy, I'm like, how did that happen? Right, I think I'll do it. that again. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of fun. I want to do it again. Yes, yes, because, but I, it was, it was a, a painful birth. But it was a great, a great learning curve and a great growing experience for me personally, more than, more than. Yeah, and I think it was an ego thing too, because Tom said I'm taking orders from a child. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's not those kid. It's not those kid. It's not those kid. That's what. No, I. Speaking of that, I though. I said I'm 26 and I'm 50. But coming in, with, coming in with Tara Hines. Yeah. Was a huge thing because her and I were, you know, every, you know, yeah, I, yeah. we took a bowl together and I walked by her once and she was writing out over and over beat Tom Hicks, beat Tom Hicks, beat Tom Hicks on a piece of paper. And I'm like, I'm like, I can't What's up with that? that? She's like So that I mean we yeah. that friendly competition I think added a lot of but fuel you, to but me. But you saw the vision and I think what I'm hearing you say, Tom, is you said, Okay, this is painful, I'm not getting my results, but I'm gonna keep going back <coughs> to the vision because I believe that it will happen. And you have to buy into it. Yeah. If if you don't buy into it then then You're just, you might as well not be doing it at all because you have to buy into the vision of it. Mm -hmm. You have to the buy into the set. model. You have to buy in. You know, you have to, your whole body has to be in it. Yeah. You can't just be, you know, dip, dipping your toe in it. It's, it doesn't work. You mm -hmm. have to fully immerse yourself you in it. Fully commit. Right. I got to say one thing that you and I talked about because neither one of us like salesmen in particular. And you and I had a conversation, at, and I think we both kind of, <laughs> it was years ago, but we both kind of had a paradigm shift at. And I don't know who told me it was the money is an ancillary benefit to actually helping people. Right. The money is just an added thing. And I think there's agents out there that see the dollars first. Yeah. And, and it took me, after I got out of Hawk and got my, car, my house out of foreclosure and things like that, that I didn't desperately need the money. 
it's easier to sell when you have some, you know, some some when deals and, and everything. Yeah. And, and but that was a huge paradigm shift for me because I realized if I don't convert these people and they go out and have a bad experience because they don't they don't get a good agent, mm -hmm. that's on me. And so I'm not being a salesperson. I'm genuinely trying to help those persons solve a problem, and I think I can do it as well as anybody else. Yeah. So I think that changed a lot for me as well. So what would you say are the top maybe two or three things you wish you would have <coughs> learned sooner or changed sooner? I only had one. Okay. And that was calls. Calls. It, okay. as long, it, it's making calls consistently. Mm -hmm. and, and you just have to do that all the time. And as uncomfortable as that is and as many times in your mind you decide to do something else or choose not to do it, um, it will set you back and it sets you back as you know you don't make a call for a week it sets you back a week and if you don't make a call, the calls for the whole month it sets you back a month and so it, it that would have been it for me that's awesome how about for you Tom uh, learning that it's to piggyback on what you said number one would be um, getting over my lack mentality mm -hmm. uh, it took me a while in fact I think it took me until just a couple years ago if not a year ago to realize that I don't need all the deals, I just need 30 or 40 of them. Yeah. And it doesn't, you know, I can get those, doesn't matter what the source is or where they come from, I can I can find a way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, that would be the first thing I would, I would change. I would have changed earlier. The other thing I think would be, um, what were you saying? I said calls, I said calls. I just have to that, calls all the time. That, overcoming call reluctance and not finding an excuse not to make those calls because it's it's too late. It, once once you go like right now you're not making calls for this quarter or even the second quarter the calls you're making now are going to be for june july august because of the follow-up so once you realize that it's too late oh i didn't make calls this right, quarter right, oh i'm gonna right. have a crappy next quarter this it's, is all you're it's, always it's, working ahead you're a farmer yep you can't the best time to plant um, a tree was 100 years ago the second best the other time thing i think i would just add on there so, um and i know this was true for me and i think it's definitely true for you guys too is um so Tom and I, I talked about, it's not your job to motivate buyers and sellers. It's yeah. your job to find motivated buyers and sellers. And I think that ability to question and qualify a prospect and really determine if they're a genuine buyer and seller, that's the skill I wish I had sooner because... Yes. Um, and you don't drop them. You no. just It's just... You, 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 you set them you aside and you just... Them and yeah, handle you recategorize them exactly. Because I think that's what happens is we... I tell people when we're less skilled, we're not as easily able to read the situation and tell what is this prospect really doing, what's really driving them. Because at the end of the day, like Tom said, they're buying for their reasons, mm -hmm. not ours. So being able to question, qualify, and appropriately, appropriately follow up based on that person's true timeline, not the words that are coming out of their mouth, which you know is truly happening. I think that's That's really good. That's huge. Um, I like that. So what is it? Let's start with Tom. What is it that motivates you, like, to keep going, right? To, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I would say having a grandchild. Beating up our titcom. That's true. Say that again. She's the new Tara Hines. That's a compliment, by the way. Um, I, I would say having a grandchild changed my, yeah. changed me a lot. It really did. It's like you don't realize that years go by like minutes, and so I would say my big why now yeah is wanting to be able to do for others what happened for me and my story and my you know being downtrodden yeah. basically taken off the streets and put in a position where I could succeed and if I can do that for paying it forward as many people as I can over you know for the rest of my life that's kind of what motivates me to do it is to get my skill set to where it can be and where I can take it from here and give it to others somehow right. which is difficult for me to do but something I'm working towards. And so, Jen, what would you say is it that mo really motivates you to keep growing? I think I, I, I would agree with Tom is figuring out what your why is. Mm -hmm. And once you know what your why is, and it, and it could change from year to year. Right. Um, just recognize, I do this <coughs> yearly, is I, I kind of reevaluate what my why is, so then I know what I might, why I'm doing this for the next year. Right. And for me, it, it's always family. So family's always taught for me, and um, it's what I'm going to do with my family. So originally, it was, um, you know, paying off debt and really being a contributor yeah. in my family, and then it became way deeper than that, which was self-worth, 
And once you recognize that self-worth, I mean, that was probably the deepest one right there was self-worth. And um, mm -hmm. knowing that I, I was worthy of what I was doing mm -hmm. and, um, and contributing to others. Right, right, as exactly. Well. Um, but the short-term goal-wise, I do that every year as well. And short-term goals were um, paying off debt and paying for the colleges for my kids right. and, you know, just contributing. Um, I, I'll just add one more thing just from my perspective. You know, I, I thought about that and Tom and I had a lot of conversations about it always would have been easier for me personally to go backwards and just hire a couple assistants because I could sell... I don't know, 80 houses, probably by myself, 100, with a couple assistants. And I knew I'd always make more money, but, but talk about contribution. I knew I'd feel so unfulfilled because I'd feel like the only person I was serving by doing that was myself. And I didn't think that that um, would fill my soul, you know what I mean? To be just working for money, I guess, if that right. makes sense. So I think that's something that's incredibly um, important. And I know, Jen, I love the way that you do it in like a year rhythm. Like, okay, every year... Where am I coming from? What's important to me this year? You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think that if you don't have your why, then all of a sudden you're working for money again, and, and then you lose your momentum. Yeah. So you, it's always kind of going back deep inside yourself. Why? Why am I doing this? And mm -hmm. just continue to do that. Um, Vision board it if you have to. That's yeah. what I do. Something, and I think too really getting to the heart even if it's just hey I want the feeling of being debt free or whatever it is you really have to have something that ties it or I want the f feeling of not being at corporate America you know what I mean <laughs> that's huge I, I knew because I worked in corporate America that I could never go back to corporate America <laughs> because uh, I thought they were had stupid rules so it made no sense <laughs> so uh, so what would you say oh and I didn't like you know what I loved about real estate is I loved that it's an equal playing field and everybody gets to play the same game and it doesn't matter who you know because you don't get anywhere based on who you know right. like you do in other hierarchy type systems and that's what I love. I love that it's so fair. Right. Um, oh and, and we haven't even brought up time freedom. So yeah. that is also what it allows you. So time freedom and so mm -hmm. if, if I was not going to be working in corporate either yeah. just because of that I'm not an eight to five oh good lord um, but having that time freedom and dictating my own calendar mm -hmm. was huge yeah be noble control so we'll just um, add one more question and then we can finish up what do you think really makes uh, someone successful in real estate persistence persistence absolutely Persistence. Are you asking what's the secret sauce? No, what do you think is that, that really makes somebody successful in real estate? Because real estate's interesting it's a deep because question. it's, uh, I'll There's tell you, I've talked to you. What does success mean? Uh, yeah, so many people. Question. Well, what I mean, make sure. successful in real estate. You're not talking I to I believe yourself. that understanding what you're getting into is important and very important. The, the time that it's going to take up front. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what else? I, I would start with what makes people unsuccessful, and I would say the number one thing that, uh, and the millennials, you know, there's social media and there's this and that and the other, but I would say old school um, call reluctance keeps people from being as successful as they could well, be. Well, I think, I, I, I'm glad that you said that because I think the other thing is, is that people, for people first of all, they don't think sales is a profession, so right. they don't realize that you actually have to be skilled at right. it and maybe right. yep. there's a way to develop those skills. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> they think that every, everybody thinks they can be a salesperson. Yep. And I think what people forget is all this marketing and all this stuff, whether it's social media or whether it's an internet lead or whether it's a direct mail piece or an open house, really all you're doing is generating a name and phone number to talk to. It, it, I think, I think what you're saying, and I had this conversation yeah. yesterday with somebody, but is that Regardless of how you get the lead, eventually you're going to have to have a conversation with them and yeah. you have, better have skills with certain people or you're not going to get the deal anyway. Right, exactly. So I would say to, to become successful, skill set, mm -hmm. I, I would, if someone asked me, I would just say learn, the, learn disc profiles, learn, learn yeah. scripts and dialogues for each personality type and get over call reluctance and right. down the phones. Right. Door Someone knock. had actually asked me that and said, "What what what makes you guys successful? What is it? How is real estate for you?" And I said, "It's great. It's difficult. 
it is challenging, mm -hmm. and if you're not willing to make calls, I would not get into it. Yeah. Amen. Uh, absolutely. I agree with that 100%. So well, we'll finish up. What else, anything else that you guys like to share before we finish up? Or? I love you. <laughs> Just how much I love Jen. <laughs>